I'm attorney Ryan Locke. I represent people who have been injured and people who have been wrongfully convicted from my office in Atlanta, Georgia. Today I want to talk about a question um, one of my client's parents asked me today. One of my incarcerated clients, a criminal appeals client. And they asked, um, how do you talk to your clients uh, when you're representing them on appeal? Um, you know, how do you talk to them when they're in prison? And here's how. So first, we send our clients a lot of letters. And we actually have a series of letters that goes out to every client, the same letters, based on where we are in the case. And these letters explain what's happening in the case, and what we're doing, and what we're thinking about. And they also prepare the client for what's going to happen. If, um, if someone else has filed something in their case, um, the things that always happen, we always file an amended motion for new trial, almost always, and the other side almost always files a response. We always file a brief, and the other side files a brief. If it's a murder case, the attorney general files a brief. Um, we also have letters to send those to our clients and explain kind of what's happening, what's happening in the document. So we have a series of automatic letters that go out to our clients, so they always know what's going on. Another thing we do is um, the it, it, I'm filming this during the coronavirus pandemic, and so before coronavirus, we could go down and talk to our clients, and it's you, you can't just jump in the car and go visit, but it's not terribly difficult to do it either. Um, we just have to schedule a time for us to be there. We have to let the prison know if we need them face to face or not. Um, almost all of our visits are face to face, usually in a in a counselor's room, um, and we just sit, just, just kind of sit at the counselor's desk. Uh, the counselor's not there, they leave. Um, and so pre-COVID, um, we could go and, and just talk to our clients in the prison about what's going on. Uh, usually we would do that after I've reviewed everything in the case, so the trial file and the transcripts and that kind of thing. Then I would go and visit my client and we could talk about the case. If, um, if I went to visit my client before this, then it's usually not, um, it's usually not that productive or enjoyable because you know, they have a lot of questions that I can't answer because I haven't reviewed everything in the case yet. Um, now, during COVID, we, um, we schedule a lot of phone calls with our clients. Pre-COVID, we would do this too, um, depending on kind of how, how much information we have to talk about or if we have to look at something together, um, something like that. Um, now, all of our visits are over the telephone because we're not allowed to, to go and have a face-to-face -face visit. Um, in the same way, we schedule a phone call with the prison and the the counselor will call us and then we'll put um, our client on the phone and then they'll leave the room. And so it's not perfectly private. Um, usually there's, you know, in these counselor's offices, um, usually it's the counselor's office, but there are uh, typically offices around it um, or people kind of outside the office, but it's generally private. And, and also importantly, the line is not recorded. And so we can talk freely because we know that no one's going to be listening in on the conversation. Um, lastly, sometimes we can talk, even in this COVID time, we can talk face-to-face -face over video chat. And this is the same thing that the, that the prisons use to, um, to have the inmates appear in court. Um, it, it seems like most of them use WebEx, um, but it's just a room with a camera and a microphone and a, and a computer or a TV screen. And um, the, the client can sit there and I can log in to uh, the WebEx on my computer and then we can talk face to face. And we also do this if we need to talk and I either need to show them things or they need to show me things or we need to evaluate their mannerisms. So, uh, so for example, I'm, I'm representing a client now who uh, we wanted to be evaluated by a forensic psychologist. 
right? We wanted to make sure that that client wasn't suffering from any mental diseases or disorders that would have affected their case. And so for the forensic psychologist, it was important to be able to see the client as they were talking, to be able to judge how they were saying things, the, the facial expressions they were making when they were saying things, how they were moving, um, where they were looking, that kind of thing. Um, and so if we need that, like everything else, we can make an appointment. It's a little bit tougher because they also use these rooms for court, but we can usually find a time and then everyone logs on to WebEx and then we have a conversation that way. Um, in, in the same way as the phones, the, the WebEx rooms are not recorded, so we can feel pretty safe in talking there knowing that you know, it's not going to get handed over to the DA or the Attorney General or whomever. Uh, finally, um, in pre-COVID times, we would see our clients face-to-face uh, -face when they were brought to the local jail for the motion for new trial. Um, if it's here in Atlanta where I live, then I can go see them a couple days before, uh, before the motions hearing because they're typically brought up about a week before. If it's in a county where I don't live, um, then I can usually see them the morning that we're going to have the hearing. Obviously, we've talked before then to prepare for it, um, but that's kind of a final check-in uh, just to make sure that everything's going okay. Um, once we get to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court, um, I actually do not see my client um, that day because they are not brought to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court to watch the argument. And so um, usually what I'll do is after we have the argument, I will, if there's an important issue we need to discuss, then we'll talk on the phone. Um, if things otherwise went well, then I'll write them a letter and tell them that. Uh, usually they have family members who either come to the court to watch the oral argument or they watch it online. In Georgia, all of our appellate arguments are live streamed online even before coronavirus and they're recorded and posted on the Court of Appeals and Supreme Court websites. Um, so it's usually pretty easy for uh, the family members or even my clients when they have access to a computer um, for them to watch the oral argument at their convenience. So I hope you found this interesting, a little peek behind the curtain of how we do things um, in communicating with our clients. Um, if you liked the video, uh, please like it. Uh, subscribe if you want to hear more videos about uh, criminal appeals topics. Um, I really appreciate you uh, spending the time to watch this video. If you have a question that you'd like me to ask, uh, shoot me an email. It's in the details or leave that in the comments below. Thanks. I'll see you soon.